Every one of us is in some way affected by the Institute of Nikah. Either we're married, we intend getting married, or we are the product of a marriage. And that Nikah that may have taken place a long time ago, it has repercussions, it has consequences on us today. If that Nikah was entered into for the right reason, in the correct manner, all the objectives of Nikah were fulfilled, the correct partner was chosen, it was observed according to the Sharia, then the fruit will be visible today in the person that you are. Everything that took place beforehand has its consequences and you are that manifestation of the consequences of Nikah. It is for this reason that we can say without doubt that Nikah is the greatest institute, the greatest covenant, the greatest contract that you will enter into as a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent many anbiya al -Islam to this world. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّن قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً Allah Ta'ala says that we send a huge galaxy of Anbiya al -Islam. and for each one of them we created a family life for them. They had their wives, they had children. To such an extent that Isa al -Islam, was lifted up before he got married and the ulama say that when he returned to this world as a member of this ummah you will get married again and have children. This in itself illustrates to us this great covenant that we enter into. Now some of us fail to realize the nature of nikah. And people go into the institute of nikah thinking that I'll try it out. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we'll separate. My dear brother or sister, this is not like going to a shop and buying something on APRO. Where if you like it, you keep it, and if you don't, then you just give it back. This is an institute that from which many things will emanate. And ultimately, a person's success in this world and the Akhira is dependent on it. Picture that you have this treasure box in which you keep all your jewels, all your precious items, everything that is valuable. To you. And you have this box that you keep by you all the time. And this box, the nature of it is such that if you take anything out of the box, you can't put it back. It gets used up, it's finished, it's gone. But if you leave it in the box, then it's yours. You have it. It will stay with you. You will not lose that item. Marriage is that same box. Marriage is that same treasure box. Every activity, every type of interaction that is unlawful, that a person engages into before the actual institute of nikah, it is as though he's taking out of the treasure box. It's gone. There is that loss that comes about. And you're leaving less in your treasure box for the actual time when you need it. Whatever activity a person engages in before nikah, that has its consequences on his nikah. And research has shown people who were extremely promiscuous before nikah, then those type of people find it very difficult to be faithful in nikah. Any sort of relationship that one engages in before nikah, that has its consequences on the nikah afterwards. And you, many times you hear people saying that, you know, whatever you do before nikah, that is so exciting, that is so nice and so enjoyable. And once you get married, then it's boring. Then all the fun is gone. And then all the fun is lost. The reason for this is that simply that before nikah, whatever you were engaging in, whatever you were doing, that was simply because of the beautification of shaitan. Shaitan had a hand in that. Your nafs had a hand and therefore there was that enjoyment. Now once nikah is there, there's no need for shaitan to come.